From one of the least populated states in the Union, West Virginia has turned out a remarkable number of talented athletes. However, perhaps none have risen to the heights of the man affectionately known as Zeke from Cabin Creek. I'm your host, Cody Knapper, and this week on Record West Virginia, we delve into the life of the logo himself, Jerry West. Jerry West was born into poverty on May 28, 1938, in the small community of Shillian, West Virginia, on the banks of the Canal River. One of six children, West was actually a small and frail child who enjoyed spending his time hunting and fishing in the pristine woods and streams of the state. He also enjoyed basketball. West could often be found outside, regardless of the weather, shooting on a makeshift hoop nailed to a neighbor's storage shed. By the time he reached East Bank High School, West was a proficient jump shooter, but was far from a standout due to his stature. Then over the summer of 1953, West grew like a wild West Virginia weed, adding six inches to his height, and while he grew, so did his game. It wasn't long before the lanky West was recognized as one of the best players in the state. He led the Pioneers to a state title in 1956 and was named the state's player of the year after averaging more than 32 points per game. This is the Golden Blue on the attack against Penn State. Now Bob Smith drives down court. An overhead pass to Jerry West, and West scores. College teams all over the country tried to lure Jerry West to their teams. But ultimately, the now 6'3 guard chose to stay close to home and play for the West Virginia Mountaineers. In those days, freshmen weren't allowed to play varsity basketball, but West led his freshman team to a perfect 17-0 record. To West, and he's up the middle for two quick points. West has been sensational. He scored 23 so far. In his first season of varsity, West proved himself on the collegiate level, averaging a double-double with nearly 18 points and 11 rebounds per game. It's a 74-74 contest. Only seconds remain. 6,700 fans are on the edge of their seats. A pass to West. He breaks into the circle, puts up the winning bucket with only three seconds remaining. Jerry West, sensational sophomore, scored 28 points. But if his sophomore season was his introduction, it would be his junior year that would cement West as a national star. His production soared as he again averaged a double-double, scoring more than 26 points a contest while pulling down more than a dozen boards. In the NCAA, West started to show a type of performance that would earn Zeke from Cabin Creek another nickname in the future, Mr. Clutch. West set an NCAA tournament record, scoring 160 points in five games and leading the Mountaineers all the way to the national title against the California Golden Bears. Finally, a beat to Jerry, and he powers down the lane for another score. WVU's smashing triumph puts it in the championship game. The national championship is at stake as West Virginia gets the opening tip against California. These teams have beaten every one of their paths. Bob Smith misses, but the dazzling Jerry West follows up to score. WVU would come up just one point short, losing to Cal 71-70. But despite the loss, West was named the 1959 Final Four's most outstanding player. The next season, West again saw his numbers increase, averaging just over 29 points and 16 rebounds a game. The Mountaineers would lose in the semifinal of the East Region of the NCAA Tournament, and West would begin preparing for the 1960 Summer Olympics. West, along with another future NBA star, Oscar Robertson, co-captained the American basketball team at the 1960 Olympics. In eight games, West scored 114 points, and Team USA cruised to the gold medal, winning games by an average score of 102 to 60. And a drive from the Los Angeles Lakers. The Minneapolis Lakers selected West with the second overall pick of the 1960 NBA draft. The Lakers relocated to Los Angeles shortly after selecting West, and the shy reserved country boy would soon be playing basketball in the shine of Tinseltown. As a rookie, West averaged nearly 18 points and eight rebounds, earning himself his first of 14 All-Star selections. 
one for each year of his career. Foul. Great man to have at the foul line. Coming into this game in six games, Jerry had scored 223 points. Nelson's third foul with 4.17 to go. And now the Lakers within four points. A total of 41 for this superstar. Superstar he is, and the Celtics are doing everything they can. Despite his success and heroic late game shots that earned him his Mr. Clutch moniker, there were some struggles for the All-Star. Excuse me, Chris, the Celtics double teaming. They would have rather have Egan or Erickson take the shot than West. And time has run out, and the Boston Celtics have done it again. Another jewel in that crown. I want to say that Jerry West was absolutely fantastic. That was one of the greatest exhibitions I ever saw in my life. Uh, I, I can only speak for Red because I had to play him all through the series. And Jack, I tell you, I had to say a little prayer every time he got the ball. By the start of the 1971-72 season, West had established himself as one of the league's premier players. But despite having made the NBA Finals seven times and even winning a Finals MVP in 1969, West had zero championships to show for it. Determined to remove the championship chip from his shoulder, West, along with Wilt Chamberlain, led the Lakers back to the NBA playoffs, where they faced the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks in the conference finals. This game pitted some of the league's all-time best players against each other, as Chamberlain faced off against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and West went head-to-head -head with his old Olympic teammate, Oscar Robertson. The Bucks drilled L.A. in Game 1, 93-72, before the Lakers bounced back to win the next two games by slim margins. Milwaukee again hammered Los Angeles in Game 4. In Game 5, the Lakers grabbed control of the series behind a double-double by West of 22 points and 10 assists. L.A. eventually defeated the Bucks four games to two, while Kareem and Chamberlain had some colossal battles in the paint during the series. West clearly outplayed Robertson, averaging 22 points and eight assists. In the finals, the Lakers met the team that had cost them a championship in 1970, the New York Knicks. This time, LA would have no trouble defeating the Knicks four to one to claim the first and only NBA title for West as a player. At last, the moment Laker fans have been waiting for for 12 years. After seven heartbreaking tries, Jerry West had more than earned his reward. West would retire from the NBA in 1974, finishing his career with more than 25,000 points and a 27 point per game average. The fourth best all time among retired players. The only stain on his career being his one and eight record in the NBA Finals. But West would find more final success in his career as an NBA executive, helping to guide the Lakers to four championships as the team's general manager between 1982 and 1994, and helping the team capture another title in 2000 as its vice president of operations. West has continued his front office success by being an integral part of the Golden State Warriors executive board that helped the Warriors win championships in 2015 and 2017. Currently, Jerry West serves as an advisory consultant on the executive board of the Los Angeles Clippers. Two seconds, one second, West throws it up, he makes it, West throws it up and makes it, over half court. The ball game is tied. In 1969, the NBA turned to designer Alan Siegel to create the new logo for the league. What Siegel turned in was the instantly recognizable silhouette of a player driving down court against a red, white, and blue background. That shadowy figure was none other than Jerry West. And while many players have been the face of the league, only one has been its logo. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, share, and be sure to subscribe.